Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Open Web Community and Creators Hackathon. Uh, this session is the project presentation workshop. And leading the session, we have with us Ashley Crawford. Uh, Ashley Crawford is a pro program manager at NIR uh, who works on the DevRel team. And she has pre presented at quite a few hackathons herself. And so she's going to walk us through making a pitch uh, that accurately showcases the problems you're solving to the judges. Um, so I'm just going to show, take us through a quick overview of the hackathon for some of us that might be coming on to this for the first time. Uh, and so this hackathon started on May, uh, May 15th, but we had a, a pre-event on May 14th, which was the conference, uh, the kickoff conference. So if you missed that conference and you want to kind of get more information and more context of what we're talking about when we say open web community. Uh, you probably want to click this button here and jump into the conference and you'll get more context there. Uh, we have the whole schedule of events here. We have the forum when we talk about going to the forum uh, or going to discourse forum. Uh, we're talking about this forum here. You can click the link and drop into the near forums there. And we have the general discord. But if you are coming into the, this for the first time, uh, you want to click this big purplish red register button. You click this button. The only thing you have to fill after that is your email address. And we will email you back with everything you need to get started in this hackathon. We'll get a little bit of a little intro video. Uh, we'll send you everything you need. So that is what I would suggest to get started. Um, so that is createbase.community slash hackathon. And I am going to drop that in the chat right here for anyone that has not found this yet and just found their way into this. Uh, so welcome, by the way. Um, so as we drop down a little bit, uh, you'll start to see the different bounty DAOs that we have for this hackathon. Um, so a bounty is just something we're giving as a payout, uh, and that will be in near tokens. Uh, so NEAR is a layer one blockchain, and so all, we have applications built on it. One of them is a DAO. Um, the, a, the, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, and all that really means is that we people use their NEAR accounts to submit transactions on the blockchain and vote yes or no uh, on different proposals, so different funding proposals uh, in this case. Um, and so. We have these eight uh, DAOs that are funded with different near amounts. So you kind of have the different near amounts stated here. And throughout the hackathon, you are able to submit tasks to these DAOs um, and earn payouts uh, through the, your proposals. So that's kind of how it works. And I know it's a lot of information there, but you can kind of click these little guide buttons and you will drop right into the near form. So for example, if I was like, okay, I have an, you know, for example, mint base, uh, you know, we'll keep a little quiet, but mint base just launched on mainnet. Um, and so if I was like, okay, I want to launch an NFT application that is going to help to onboard new people into the NFT community, I can hit click here get a guide on the near forum that will drop me into the NFT onboarding subcategory where I can learn more about how to submit. Um, if you can, you know, so read it all here, all the information here, you can click, you know, click through it yourself, but you can also see some other people who have been asking questions. Uh, so someone here said, here's my ID, here's my hackathon ideation link. So you can click in there and then you can start seeing what someone has already proposed and how they've submitted their projects. So if you, if you have no clue what you're, you know, where you're going so far or where you would like to go with this, uh, feel free to go there. Um, but as you drop down to kind of what you'd like to do, so we have mint-based bounty specifically, uh, you'll see in how to earn section. So the first way how to earn is ideations. Uh, there, again, this is a 10-year payout for that. Um, there's a little um, guide here, which you can walk yourself through. Um, and you can, you know, you so you submit your ideation, find word minimums on the near forums, and we have a submission guide, very general here. Uh, today, what we're going to be going through is the project presentation guide. Uh, as you do this, you can kind of post your submission to the DAO of your choice. We have a very loose guide here of how to submit. So in general, we're just looking for maybe five to ten slides um, showcasing your project. Um, but honestly, the idea is you should be showcasing a project in an efficient way, and it might take a few more slides than that, or it might take a, 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 you know, uh, some other graphics in there. And so that is what this presentation is about. It's figuring out how to efficiently showcase your project to the judges that are going to be evaluating uh, what you're submitting. Um, so I'm going to stop presenting there and pass it off to Ashley. Um, so take it away. 
Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Ash or Ashley. Uh, feel free to call me either. Um, if anybody is in the chat and listening right now, I just want to like start off with a little bit of a roll call. So if you're here, can you just drop an emoji or a hi in chat, please? That would be super great. Um, uh, I guess a little bit more about me. I am a uh, program manager at NIR. I've presented at a few hackathons myself. Um, I'm going to show you guys a really cool tool today that's going to make it really easy. Hi, everybody. I see so many highs. Um, personally, I find Google Slides to be hard to use because it, it's a lot of manual work. And anybody who knows me knows that I hate manual work. So I'm going to be showing you guys a really cool um, tool today called Beautiful.ai, which is an AI-powered slide deck maker. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's a, that's that's like my little teaser there. And I'm going to first start off with like kind of a... Um, a bit of a do and do not show and tell thing, and then I'm gonna make a slide deck with you guys. So how many slides make a pitch deck? That's really dependent on what you're pitching and uh, how big your project is, right? Um, I would say if you're pitching a hackathon project, you probably wanna keep it around five to eight slides generally is, is what I would say, unless you have lots of really good content, which I'll dive into um, in my presentation that I'm about to do. So I'm going to click, click play on this and I'm going to do screen share, present to audience, uh, share screen. All right, hopefully this will work. I haven't used their meet before, so bear with me. Um, all right, can you guys see this? It's loading. Can you, can you see it now? We can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, pitch decks for hackathons. This is a very pretty pitch deck here, JK. Uh, that being said, Pitch decks are mostly boring. Uh, we all know this, and so I think all of us kind of agree. We've all been in middle school, and somebody's presenting, and you're like, oh, God, another PowerPoint. And it's awful, right? So um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to, how, to, how to not do boring ones, but first I'm going to show you why pitch decks are boring. So first of all, how to bore your audience. Give them a slide that's the exact same text that you're reading to them. Tell them exactly what they can read for themselves just in your own voice. Inflection in your voice won't matter because they've already read the slide in their own voice and applied their own interpretation to the text. And believe it or not, even mental first impressions stick harder than anything you're going to add with voice inflections. Using paragraphs to break this up might engage your audience a tiny bit more, but not really. This is a lot of text, and yes, I've seen slides like this. These slides are overwhelming, boring, boring, and straight out stressful for the audience. Avoid this. Avoid a ton of text. Just like less text is more at all times, okay? People are visual, um, so it's really important. So this, I just read this slide to you. If you're ever presenting or like filming your presentation and you find yourself reading more than like four words that are already on this, the like one part of the slide, you have too much on the too much text on that slide. Like it should all be mostly verbal and the the slide deck is there as a visual to help assist your your, your verbiage does that make sense okay I, i'm yeah i'm sure it does um also avoid going back to middle school y'all uh you're 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 probably adults um you're probably not in middle school we've all seen this slide where there's like a picture on the right and there's like a title and then there's a, a bullet point list right avoid that slide uh when you saw this slide you were probably 13 they were probably presenting about a sea animal they use bullet points and a picture just just don't don't do this this is bad this is very boring right um it's it's a cute picture of a jellyfish but that's the only thing anybody's noticing everything else is already is already irrelevant and so yeah, just, just avoid this kind of format. Um, avoid confusing stories. So don't bounce around. Like make sure you have a good flow as you're doing your pitch deck. Um, so pitch deck title to your idea to explaining the problem to how you solve the problem to tangent story to random facts. It's too much. Like remember, cut 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 as much as you can. Like cut the fluff. This is very important. This is a bad uh, bad diagram here that I have that shows you like this is common. People commonly will go in their pitch decks and like tell a tangent story or give a random fact. And it's like, I just want to know the point. Like, I want to know what your point is. Everybody's time is valuable. Everybody has very short attention spans, especially if you have ADD like me. And so just remember that your audience is probably not, not as focused on it as you are. So the more pictures you give and the more visuals and the more direct you make it, the better off you're going to be. So want, do you want a great pitch deck? You're going to need to cut the fluff. That's, that's the important thing. You're going to need to cut all of the things that you think you need to type out. No, put those in the notes for yourself. Those are for you to say and not for people to see. 
So the secret formula is to present the problem, propose a solution, and now the problem is solved by your team and your product. This is the formula for hackathon pitch decks. So start off and like get them engaged. What is the problem that they're that they, that that needs to be solved? Propose how you're going to come up with a solution. So for example, um, I'll be showing you guys a deck for a project I'm actually working on right now, which is an NFT um, photo booth. And so I'm going to present the problem as. Uh, Events are really hard to get to go viral in person. Like it's hard to get people to, to, to think about them outside of it. And you need to make an impact at an event because it's a one shot deal. Um, the solution is going to be my NFT photo booth. And then the problem is then going to be solved by my, my team and my product. And this is how I'm going to show you guys the slides. So that's the secret formula. The other thing is captivating with pitch decks. And, and what do I mean by captivating? I mean, how do you get people drawn in and engaged? Less large large percent of text and less visuals is not gonna is it's not gonna engage people. Like people don't want to read already. I love reading and I don't want to read your pitch deck. Like nobody wants to read anything unless they can avoid it. So the more visuals you have, the more impactful you have. Even the slide right here, you're probably looking at it, looking at it, and you're like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what it means. But that means you're listening to me to figure out what it means, which means that you're actually captivating the audience. Um, less is more. So speak. Don't type. So like if you're typing something and you're planning on saying it out loud, cut that. No, no, no. Um, show, don't tell. So what I mean by this is visuals always, so many visuals like graphs, images, graphics, pictures, whatever you can do, like give them visual things so that they have to look at it, be a little bit confused until you start explaining what it means. And that's why, again, we're going back to captivating. And get to the point, don't dally. Uh, people, people have very short attention spans, as I said, and it's very, very important to like just be as direct as possible and, and showcase how your solution is there. Um, so you've got this. Uh, are there any questions at this point? And if not, we're going to do a workshop where we work on a slide deck together. And it's, it's one of mine that I'm going to show you guys how, to, how I would do this. And I'm going to show you how I use this beautiful AI tool to, to do it very quickly. And then I'm happy to have anybody else uh, hop on and uh, ask me questions as well. Like raise your hand if you have any questions. Um, I'm also happy to like look at your pitch deck if you already have one or look at your slides and give feedback um, as part of the workshop. Uh, okay, I'm glad that the connection is not choppy for most people. That's my fingers hoped. I, I have gigabit internet. Please let this be good. Um, all right, so while I wait for questions, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back and I'm going to open up Retro Neon, this pitch deck here. And so this is... Um, uh, a pitch deck that I was working on, and then I realized I should actually work on it in the workshop with you guys to show you what I mean. Um, so this is a slide that was made in beautiful.ai. Um, and then this is like, so let's say I have this one. It says good, good events or viral experiences. So I start off with a statement, right? I'm starting off with like basically something to catch your attention and kind of also present the problem. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to change the background to also be like, I want the background to be like this pretty gradient color. So I want to get rid of this image here. And I want to get rid of, OK, now I want it to be gradient um, and feel good. OK, it's not doing the gradient thing. I don't know why. It is AI, so it's a little finicky. So like if you click auto, like you see it like automatically does the best thing that it thinks it is. But I'm going to go with this because I like it because it pops out. Um, so then I say, it all started with a question. What if we could showcase NFT galleries at an event, change those galleries on demand, and have people change what they see in front of them using the near blockchain? Yeah, Dalian, I'm absolutely happy to go through your pitch deck. Absolutely. Um, let me finish uh, going through this one, and then we'll go through yours together as a little workshop. Um, and so then the user journey. So this is kind of like, it all started with a question. So I'm laying out here kind of like the problem and also the solution, right? And then I'm going to explain the solution in depth. So like event starts, come to event, get in your wallet. You see, like this is the idea. And I would explain this much better with like verbiage versus what's only on the screen. Um, uh, I believe this is recorded. Is that right, Chloe? That is correct. This is recorded, yes. Cool. So Frederico, this should be available afterwards. If you need to leave, you're good. Um, and then, so this is the user journey. So if I were presenting this slide right here, like instead of just showing it to you how I'm making it, I would go, the user journey of somebody using Retro Neon is incredibly important and also vi like incredible, incredibly vital to our success as an event. Um, basically, the event will start and 
just like any event that starts, there's not going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be harder to get people to come, especially because it's a several day long event. And so getting people in there can be a difficult problem to solve. Um, we get one person who comes to the event perhaps, and we give them a near wallet. And when we give them that near wallet, we, we give them the ability to now access all of the dApps and um, things on the near ecosystem. After that, we can give them a, the dApp that we've made for this NFT photo booth and show them a bunch of different art galleries on this app on their phone where they log in with their near wallet and then they can select somebody else's art gallery. And when they look up, all of these art that they like, all these this gallery that they've selected, all of it will be presented in front of them in a projected AR setting. Um, and they'll take selfies in this photo booth, and then the event should go viral because everybody else who's at the event will see this and be like, "Whoa, how the heck did you get a picture with like people's art or whatever it would be?" You know what I mean? Example, not actually people. Um, so that's the idea. And so that's like, you, if you notice, I very rarely said anything that was actually on the slide, and said I added a bunch of other text. And the things that I said were not on the slide per se. The slide is a guide. That rhymes. Okay, cool. Glad we got it. Um, so I can keep making this, or Frederico, if you'd like, we can go through your slide, um, your slide deck, if you'd like. If you want to raise your hand, I can pull you up here. But at this point, for this particular deck, what I would do is um, kind of showcase some images of the product. So I'd add some screenshots of the product, or like some some demo video or GIF or whatever, and that way people can see it. And then I would add snippets of the code after that that had had gone into it, especially for a hackathon project. Um, explain some of the challenges maybe that we my, my team and I had faced. And then I would, at the end, uh, explain how we had overcome these challenges and now this problem is solved and this event will go viral. Um, hope that makes sense for everybody. Uh, yeah, raise your hand if you want to work on your deck. Absolutely. Yeah, just raise your hand. It's on the on the right hand side of the screen. There's a raise hand button. Click that. Yeah. All right. We got somebody in there. All right. Delian, I'm going to. Uh, yeah. Great. Awesome. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. OK. All right. I'm, I'm going gonna... to put my deck in the in the link. Sure. I'm going to um, share again when, once I get that. Um, and can you tell me how to pronounce your name, please? Delian. Delian. OK, thank you. Yep. Just want to make sure I had it right. OK, I got your deck right here. I'm going to open it up on here. And um, Delian, how comfortable are you with, with critique and feedback? Um, I prefer pure, blunt transparency. Perfect. Let's go. OK, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so I'm looking at your deck. It's black and white. Uh, this is this is a stylistic choice that can work if you're doing a very minimalistic um, deck, which can happen. Uh, but I would honestly advise like a little bit of color, especially because you're mentioning creators and community and those words to me like invoke color. So just starting there, like giving yourself some some vibrancy, some color, maybe even like making a logo or whatever it is for your your app. Like it's it's you can go into Canva and plug things together until you have a logo. Um, this is an advice. And if anybody doesn't know what I mean when I say Canva, it's canva.com. It's a free design tool. Um, so next slide, we've got problem uh, centralization. Content creators don't have control over their content and platform. OK, so this is already a lot of text. And so this is what I was saying about people with short attention spans and they don't like to read. I read for fun. And I like, no offense, please do not take it that way. I already am like struggling to pull the main problem out of these two things. Okay. So what I would do here is I would try to like centralize it into one sentence, like compress all this into one sentence. And then when you're recording, you can add all this context over that slide. Gotcha. Does that make sense? OK. Yeah, I mean, it's all going to be pretty much written out because I literally put this together for the hackathon, but all of your critiques are being taken in and warranted. Sure, absolutely. And and you you have creative liberty to do whatever it is you want to do. I'm just giving you what I know has worked for me in the past. So that well, there is no and failure leads clues and I'm banking on your success with pitch deck. So everything <laughs> everything you're telling me, I'm taking it. Cool. Okay. So again on this slide, um, we've got the bullet points, we've got the the summary text up here. This is Again, too long, I would say. Okay. Bullet points are great, um, but uh, you're going to want to add a graphic or an image here, something like that. Like maybe a screenshot of what you've built um, would be great here. That'd be good. I like that you're already following the secret kind of formula, which you have the problem and the solution. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good job on that. Um, market validation. So this is like the data that backs up why you're, why you're going to be successful. This is very important, um, but I would turn this into 
like a visual graph. So again, I use beautiful.ai um, because it does graphs for me and I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So I'm gonna log in and I'm just gonna go add a new presentation and I'll save this one, sure. And I'm gonna add a slide. So if I'm looking at yours, it says, uh, there are currently 85, <laughs> 850,000 active po podcasts and over 30 million podcast episodes. So let's take that data real fast and go turn it into something. <laughs> so we're gonna go into beautiful AI and I'm gonna look for something that feels right for that kind of data. Um, so I think I'm gonna do a, uh, like a people percentage comparison. I'm gonna start with a blank template and we're basically gonna say, there are 30 million podcast episodes and 850 active podcasts. Okay, so I want to change this. Bom, bom, bom. This is probably not the right format, actually, I'm realizing. But that's okay. We can find one that works. Um, but this is like how I would basically do it. Is I'd go in and I'd try to find the right graph, basically, um, to, to display the data. Am, am I making sense here for you, Delion? Yes. Okay. So I would actually like do something like a funnel for this or something like showing how many users there are actually listening at the top of the funnel and at the bottom of the funnel, how many like how many creators there are. And that's that's the idea. And it's very easy to do. So again, I'll just like walk you through it. But like we have right here, there's 30 million podcast episodes, 850,000 active and 89 million. So this is like, yeah, exactly. So I would just start with like uh, content uh, consumers. And then over here, oh, I can't type. Oh, that's, wow, consumers. And then I would do uh, content. And then I would do content creators. Right, and so when you do that, you're gonna basically lay out how the funnel works already. And then over here on the side, you can give your data. So you can be like, there's, I don't know, I'm gonna make up a number because it wasn't on your slide deck about how many people actually consume it, but I would do something like one billion YouTube watchers a month or whatever, right? Um, and if it's showing up white, that's because it's doing an AI. You can just change it by bolding it um, or change it like that. And then in content, I'd be like, there's eight, what is it that you said? 30 million, 30 million podcast episodes. Um, again, it's doing it in white, it's kind of annoying. Episodes. Um, and then down here, I would be like, how many content creators are there? So there's, uh, I'm just going to pull a number here. This is not accurate by any means, right? But like we're only going to say 15, 60 active musicians. You want these all to kind of line up and like actually like make sense, right? <laughs> like versus what I'm doing where I'm just plugging in numbers from your slide deck and trying to make them make sense. But I hope right. I'm making um, But you'll notice we already have, oh God, um, it helps when you can see, by the way. Uh, we already have like, a slide here that tells the story of how people are largely consuming content, there's a lot of content, and there's a small amount of creators. And then you could flip this and you could like emphasize this, and then you could do the next one being the reverse and showing how the money actually flows and how it really doesn't flow, right? This is a real problem. And that right there would give you the market validation while also reinforcing the problem. Um, for the market size, this is this is actually the slide I needed to make what I just made. So thank you. Sorry, I missed that. Um, but this is great. Again, just add a graphic here. Um, product. So again, we have a lot of text here. So I would show, not tell. So if you can like show screenshots of your Figma file or your design or whatever you have here, like each step in a in a screenshot, and then like have a little blurb of text under it, that's going to be more powerful there. Um, the business model. This looks great. Uh, this is awesome. Again, just Add a, add a graphic with this data. Um, for your market adoption, this is also great. I would do something like uh, the path, the journey one right here. And I would just like talk about how you plan to like get adoption by these things. Um, and then for competition, like you, you should definitely lay these out. And for this, you could just put their logos in the slide instead of putting their name. People will recognize YouTube, Venmo and Twitch, you're fine. Like do, the, do their logos instead of just their names. Um, and competitive advantage. So like, why are you winning here? This is great. This is a great slide to have. Um, and it also explains why you're like solving the problem. Thumbs up here. Um, again, just add a graphic or visual of some sort. And this one for the team. People, when you see a team slide, I can read Delion and I can read Spencer and I can read Tom. 
But if I can see your faces, I'm going to have a human like connection to you. And it's going to make it like, it's almost like a psychology hack in the sense that names that are red versus names with photos, names with photos tend to give people the ability to like connect to you and like have like an emotional response. And so that's, that's like a psychology hack basically. Um, so it definitely add photos here, but it looks like you're planning on it. So that's a, uh, that's my feedback there. What would do you, do you have any other questions, Zillion? No, this was um, thorough and much appreciated. Cool. Glad to help. Um, absolutely. This is a beautiful slide deck that has a lot of potential. Um, but uh, I think you you are very receptive to feedback, which is also a great thing to hear. Cool. Um, do you want to bring up the next person, Chloe? All right. Hello. Uh, before we start, can you tell me how to pronounce your name? Hello, I'm Hervé. I'm going to put my camera since I can connect. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm Hervé, uh, actually in, uh, based in Buenos Aires and working, uh, launching my uh, project called Monogramma. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, ideating or sharing the idea and I'm today working on the pitch deck. Uh, this pitch deck today is obviously, I shared with you through a uh, through, uh, good look. I believe. I see the Google Drive link. Yeah, I got it. Google Drive. Sorry, because I didn't know your. No, no, it's okay. It's you don't have to build it in the tool I suggest. This is great. This is perfect. Yeah. So um, obviously, you would see. I mean, I, I don't still have the market and all this information. So obviously, the visual. I, I understood that I will have to work uh, heavily on it. Uh, but maybe we could uh, review it if it's okay sure. for you. Absolutely, okay. would love to. So, monogram initi monogramma initiative, crypto art NFTs for social impact. This is beautiful. I love this slide. This is already well laid out and like, it's it's captivating. It gets it sets the mood. It's like kind of moody, kind of dark, but like elegant is like the the vibe that I'm getting. Um, that's great. And it's got you as the founder. Also great. So about us, um, again, lots of text here. I would just advise cutting yeah. this like probably by half, honestly. Um, it does look like important text, which is good. It doesn't sound like a lot of fluff, but uh, just just think about like, essentially the less you can say and the more you can show, it's gonna like win people over, right? Um, yeah. People are very visual. And so this is great, but also like if somebody, if somebody has like dyslexia or struggles to read, this is, or like doesn't like reading, this is already a slide that's gonna induce anxiety. And so um, mm -hmm. this is like, uh, just just keep that in mind, right? The big thing about any sort of design, whether it's a slide deck, whether it's a product design, anything, is remembering how people will feel when they view whatever it is that you're making and keeping a high perspective of empathy so that you can kind of keep in mind, like even if it doesn't give you anxiety, like you have to recognize other people might have limitations or things. And so, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, I've said that so many times, I need to stop saying that, it's a bad habit. Okay, vision, mission, and values. This is awesome. Um, this Maybe looks really great. What's up? I, I, may, I have to do it graphic after this. I, I will see how yeah. to make it more cool. So honestly, for this one, because it is a vision, vision, mission, and key and values, I would break these into individual slides. Personally, um, I know it's going to make your slide deck a little longer than like five to eight slides, like I said. But like, these are so powerful, and you're already losing people's attention by putting them stacked together on each one. They're all impactful statements. Make them be impactful statements. Like, let them shine. It's going to be very helpful for you. And like, you can add with the vision here. Like, you can add like a, a graphic or a chart or a picture, even anything you want, a logo like next to it. And it's going to let that, that, that vision actually shine forward and like present to people what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, I am missing a little bit of the problem here in the beginning. So I would start off with the problem, just yeah. like any good book um, or story or movie. You always want to see, uh, I'm going to make this bigger for somebody here. Um, you always want to see, kind of why you're engaged. Like what? what is, like if you're in a, reading a book, right? There's always like, oh, there's a war, or there's a problem, or uh, there's a romance or whatever it is. You gotta know what you're paying attention to. And so that's just the same thing for pitch decks. You've gotta start off with a problem. Um, the vision, mission, values, we've already been through this. This is beautiful, this is a great slide. Um, I would just cut these paragraphs like, you, you don't have to use perfect sentences in pitch decks. It's it's a common misconception that you do. You can actually use very partial like sentences and it would be fine. So like, it's like 
take out the our goal is to and just have like what we do foster global yeah. thought leadership in crypto art fintech blockchain and di digital financial inclusion perfect that'd be good like just cut out like the filler words that are there to like make it be a no. sentence and focus instead on what you what it is you're telling them um or showing them this is beautiful problems and opportunities module one module two module three module four i imagine you're filling these in later is that what yeah right? okay. this might be the first slide i was thinking maybe i can use mm -hmm. it as a problem and opportunity i don't know this is beautiful. Yeah, I would do that. Use this as your first slide. And like, remember not to stack too many things, not too much. Don't do too much content per slide. So like, don't be afraid to like, just start with problems and then split opportunities into its own slide, you know? Um, because I imagine you're going to have a couple of different things under problems. And so you want those to really shine and people really to feel those problems. Yeah. Um, what do we solve? This looks like a nice filler slide, but good graphics. Good job. I'm proud of those. Those look beautiful. Um, and then monogram ideation process and flowchart. This is awesome. Okay, this right here for everybody watching is an example of a really good diagram um, that I, 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 I'm looking at right here. So this is the kind of thing where I'm confused looking at it. Remember I said, that's good. You want people to be a little bit confused looking at it because it's drawing their interest and they're trying to figure out like a puzzle. So I imagine when you're presenting, you're gonna walk people through this like in your video presentation, yeah. right? This is going to be like, your bread and butter right here because people are going to be captivated by this. They're going to try to figure it out like a puzzle and you're going to explain it and walk it through, walk them through that and be like the guide basically that's helping them understand how to solve this puzzle. And then they're going to feel accomplished and they're going to value what you're saying more. Um, again, okay. a psychology hack. Um, roadmap. This is also gorgeous. I would, uh, there's like a little design thing happening here. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure you'll fix that. Yeah. Um, I would again cut down on the bullet points. So try three bullet points under each one at most, um, if you can. Like if you can still convey your 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 ideas there, that's what I would do. Um, targets and KPIs. Okay, so this right here already overwhelmed me. I had like a big sigh there if you noticed when I said this, and like that was just because it it, it it's a lot of text and it's a lot to absorb. I would break each of these KPIs for a few like different quarters into their own slide and then lay out these bullet points with like the ones that are most important in, in like a larger text and the ones that are a li little less important like a smaller size text um and that looks like it's it but um was that feedback helpful for you yeah a lot cool I, awesome I'm gonna organize everything that's yeah thank yeah, you so much great job though great job overall i'm excited to see your finalized product yeah good luck you. good luck thank, thank you for your time um, if anybody else wants to raise their hand and come on and, and like get, get some help, feel free. Um, Chloe, uh, can you, uh, Irve, or Irve, can you drop or Chloe, can you remove? There we go. Cool. Hi, Rich. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I pronouncing my, your name correctly? Yes. Uh, my internet's a little bit bad though, because I'm running on Ethereum node. No, no so worries. If I drop off, um, sorry. Is this uh, iCloud, the link to your, your deck? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to give you a pro tip already because I haven't even looked at the deck and you said check out this horrible deck to see what not, what not to do. Yeah. Um, you, you could be totally right here, but if you ever start any presentation with anything that like, um, I'm a big fan of like self-degenerative humor personally, but I've learned that when I'm like trying to get somebody's attention, you can't, you don't ever start with that is what I'm saying. Um, so like you, you know what I mean? Am I making sense? Like, uh, you, you basically set me up to look at this and go, oh, this is going to be bad. Yeah, and be super critical. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, okay, cool. I'm just giving you the, the tips. So I'm looking at this. Um, catch me if you can. Welcome, Quid and FT Bank. There's like a DreamWorks thing over it. I have no idea what's happening here, but I am intrigued. There's lots of good visual. Um, I would worry a little bit about the opacity layers. So opacity is a fun thing to do. I know this because I love doing it. But... Um, if somebody has any sort of like sight impairment whatsoever, it's going to be hard for them to see with this color contrast. So that's mm -hmm. that's my first feedback right there. Um, I would also try to put a title on this on this deck about like what what is it that we're looking at? Like, are we looking at the Quid NFT Bank because that's what I'm understanding it? Or are we looking at DreamWorks? Like, what is this deck going to be about? So that's where I would start. Um, and then we've got why Quid. What do I hold? What do I stake? When do I cash? This is actually an interesting slide. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the design choices, but it's not terrible. Like, really. Like, you've got minimal text. 
you're, you're saying why quid you're presenting the problems that like people face um, I don't know what these PL, TVL, and MPP, MPV means, but I imagine you'd explain that when you're presenting, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, this is actually not, this is like the design choices are interesting, sure, but like functionally and fundamentally, you've got the right idea here with like a small amount of text, a visual, you've got somebody thinking there. So it tells me that I'm supposed to be thinking like this dude. Uh, you got something going over here that says problems, like a, I think it's a song. Um, I think that's a Spotify song. I'm not sure. So uh just making things a little more clear staying away from that opacity button it's a fun button but it's 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 your enemy and sometimes i promise um all right so portfolio loss distribution three levels of capitalization i have no idea what this slide is about do you want to explain it to me rich are you still here oh we lost him oh he's back yeah sorry i dropped out for a second no worries will um, you explain what the slide is about for me so in summary, you have like the traditional Wall Street like fund managers that take care of people's portfolio for them. And if you watch any of these movies, it's basically summarizing that as, um, you know, they're all corrupt, they're all broken in many ways, and we automate it instead with like a smart portfolio manager as a smart contract. Cool. Okay. So the way you just explained this was really well, like really well done. All I would do to change this is I would make each of these like movies here not opaque, first of all. I'd if I went up into beautiful AI, I can actually show you what I mean. So I go over here, I do a little photo grid in beautiful AI, for example. Um, so I'm gonna go to my untitled and show you what I mean. Da -da -da. I'd add a photo grid, um, I'd add all those movies, right? Just like this. And then I'd add a text, so I would add it um like I'd add the movies in like this, probably whatever. And then I would just do a plus, uh, add an element. And I would add uh, a text somewhere that's like, we've all seen this movie. We've all seen these movies, you know, all, or like, we've seen this before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I would do that, seen this before. Can I type? I cannot type. Um, we've seen this before. And then I would just make it be a heading and bold it and then i would just showcase the movies there and like explain exactly what you just explained about how these were all movies about you know the wall street thing and like basically it's just making it a little bit cleaner but also you're still telling a story and so you're you're, you're fundamentally getting like the the basics here it's just the presentation is a little bit um off mm -hmm. uh okay so structural typical structure of a typical future flow securitization what does this mean? So linking back to the previous slide, this kind of scheme is what a lot of those funds use to basically take what people have as whatever their assets, their um, um, their securities, their stocks, and put that into a giant bundle. And then they break it up into little pieces and sell it as debt to investors. Um, so this kind of just describes like how they do it and, and what's wrong with it. Perfect. So I would take this picture right here, make it not opaque, right? So I'd start with that. I would get rid of the text over, I'd get rid of the memes. You start with this and then you can like literally just put like a giant red X over it. And then like that would explain to me, oh, this is what the, this is the old way. And now we're not doing this anymore. Do you know what I mean? Um, again, the op opacity is kind of messing with you here and the multiple layers you're doing. It's just, it's a little confusing for people, I think. Um, this looks great. Okay, so crypto back cash, quid gives you money, passive income, you keep your shares, physically centered, pays, but it pays back later. Amazing. Just cut the fluff. Like you got some memes here, C cut those, cut those memes out. I love memes. I'm a meme. I'm a, I, I am a mean lady, but like I can't say meme lord because I'm a woman. Um, but I, um, I think that there's a time and a place for them and you can do them in decks. Absolutely. But you don't want to stack it over an actual really important image. And this image right here is very important. This right here is your value prop and it's telling me why I should use your product. And that's very important. Um, mm -hmm. And so you, you don't want to do memes with something that's like actually conveying a very important message. Um, unless the meme is conveying your important message. Mm -hmm. So risk budget, again, your opacity is kind of screwing you here. I would just put your global money logo down in the bottom right corner and then just mm -hmm. make sure your, your, your backgrounds are a nice solid color and your pictures are not opaque and you're going to do great. Um, this is also a great, a great graph, graph right here. This is good. Um, this is interesting. Uh, 
again, the opacity, well, I'm going to stop touching on that. I think you get the point on it. <laughs> but, uh, but like, this is actually really well done. Make sure your text stands out from your background. So like the color needs to be a high contrast from your background so people can see it. Mm -hmm. um, this is especially important for when we start going back to yeah. real in-person hackathons and you're actually presenting on a stage in front of people. People can't see from far away and those projectors suck. Um, I say this is a projector nerd. So like, just keep that tip in the back of your mind, like high contrast colors against each other for text is very important. Um, this is great though, like this is good content. Uh, so I, I would keep this just the way it is. It's a lot of text, but like, I think you can layer it out in a way that makes sense. Um, who are we? This is great. Like got pictures, got faces. Don't know who this guy is unless this is one of you. Um, if it is, I'm not getting that like message conveyed. And then, uh, dope, very dope. Great, great slide. Just maybe make it a little cleaner in the design choices. And then, uh, let's build, not hold. Love this. Uh, again, just try, try to limit your opacities and your memes and stuff like that on this slide, but you've got this. That, that was, I think you set yourself up thinking that this is going to be a really terrible slide deck. And while the design choices are a little questionable, you've actually got the fundamentals really down on how to convey a message and how to get people interested. So uh, just just take it with like a little bit of a cleaner, like take a little broom or a mop to it and clean up some of the opacity stuff and you're going to be fine. Sweet. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, does anybody else want to come up? I'm basically just critiquing decks right now. This is my new my new job. Thank you, Chloe, for giving me a wonderful new career path of where I critique decks. Uh, Anytime. So. Seems like you're getting right into the role. So awesome to see. <laughs> hi. Um, hi, Juliana. Can you link me your deck in the chat? Oh, I see. It's the Prezel, right? Prezi? Yes, yes. Got it. Love Prezi. Prezi's a great tool. Um, yeah, in the draft. I'm not sure about the colors, but yeah, let's see. That's okay. We'll, we'll work through it. Um, all right, I'm going to click play. And VR on art online residency. Um, awesome. Okay. I like that you give reference to your photos. That's really clever. Um, you don't always have to do this because you're actually not like it's considered Creative Commons uh, for, for you using their photos at this point um, okay. because you're turning it in your own content. Just so you know, like, uh, but it's good that you've done it. Like, it, it's awesome. I'm just letting other people know, like, you don't have to reference every photo you ever use in a pitch deck um, because okay. it's Creative Commons because you're turning it into your own content. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thanks. Cool. Okay, so dope. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide. The project. Okay. And so, oh, I like this animation. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> okay, brief summary. Um, this looks great. This, this is a beautiful slide, in my opinion. You've got, basically, uh, I would take away the very brief summary. I would honestly just take this out and just make this be your highlight here. Because, okay. because people are already, like, brief summary is just filler words, right? We don't need that. We already know it's a summary. But you are telling, basically, what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. And you've got a breakdown of how, like, it's going to happen. And that's really, that's really cleverly done. Um, so then it goes into purpose. This is also beautiful. Again, I would... Uh, try to turn your purpose sen sentence into like one or two sentences if you can, or two bullet points. Um, okay. It's okay to have like a bunch here, but you're probably going to be explaining all of this verbally. So mm -hmm. whatever your big like punchy text things are, those are what you want to put out there. Um, and then try to do some sort of graphic with this as well, like an image or a chart or like um, like even just a picture of people shaking hands, whatever you can do, you know, it would all work. Um, okay. <laughs> And then now we're back to our summary. Okay, so I see how it's working. So it's taking us through each of them and taking it back to the summary. When you come back, if it's possible, I don't know how this tool fully works. I would change this statement right here each time you come back to like lead into the next step, right? So um, for example, we were right here, right? We were like online artistic residency program, which will bring together emerging non-digital artists, art researchers, and VR specialists. Um, also, reading out loud that out loud is a little verbose. Um, so see if you can condense that into like snappier words. Just convey the same okay. message, but just snappier words. Um, mm -hmm. And then when you get into purpose here, like going from there and then coming back into here, you can, you can actually lead people really cleverly with this tool that you're using here where you can say why near right or like we chose near because of xyz and then when you get into the near side um you have the goals with near right and so you're that would th am i making sense yeah like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. and so i would do that for each section again choose your like one or two bullet points that really bang out why you're doing this um and and try to do some graphics Mm -hmm. And then we're back into how. Um, 
So this is a beautiful graphic here. I don't understand it, which is good, kind <laughs> of, because um, it means you have to explain it, which again has my interest. Um, make sure your onboarding is in one line, like instead of a separated two line uh, mm -hmm, word. Mm -hmm. um, but from what I'm understanding from this, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you're basically gonna have an open call. There's gonna be a data database with people who are like hooked from that open call. And then those people are going to get onboarded and then they're going to go to like other online platform creations or a website. They're going to use designers and dap devs. Yes, and then they're yes. going to, am I getting it? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, cool. So if I can kind of guess my way through it and then you can actually clarify it, that's going to be, that's going to be great. So it's a good slide. Uh, just clean it up just a little bit. And then onboarding process. This is beautiful. I love how you like, you like kind of touched on the onboarding and then you're like, by the way, this is how we're doing this. It's clever. <laughs> Um, and then we go back and then the first phase, so the online conferences, the duration is two weeks. Cool. Okay, I'm getting this. The graphics are, you know, they're, they're clip art. They'll work. Um, if you can find anything better, go for it, but it's, it's not, this is just me being super nitpicky. You're fine. This is a good slide. It has very little, te little text. So I already kind of can, can, can grab the point as quickly as I can. Um, and then second phase. Oh, this is a beautiful slide. I am so proud of this slide. This is awesome. Um, less text, more images. I understand that VR specialists and artists are going to work together, that somebody's going to mentor them, and like that's going to be the curator who's like making sure they all work together. Uh, and then there's like an experimentation in a lab. This is wonderful. And then the third phase, again, great slide. Uh, light, light, light text. I can understand what you're doing. I understand why you're doing it. It's beautiful. Um, and so I think that is, we're going back. Okay. Uh, there should be for whom. Okay. I would put your for whom uh, sooner, honestly, because like I need to know who the target audience is a little sooner. I got it from the other slides, but if you're going to make this dedicated section, just like do that a little sooner. Um, but otherwise, this is beautiful. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for um, the tips. Sure thing. Sid has asked, what are your thoughts on having more sentences on slides when sending it through an email so it's easy to understand for others since we might not get a chance to present? Um, so, so yes, Jordan totally nailed the answer right there. The slide deck is just a teaser, right? Again, it's just a visual asset that like is there to help draw people's interest. You basically want them to schedule that meeting with you. You want to intrigue them. You want to convey enough of a point that people are like, okay, I kind of get this or I mostly get this. Now walk me through the details with your voice. If you are going to send it in an email and you're like really worried about not like not being able to actually present it, one other really handy tool is to literally um, in Google Slide, there's a notes function. Uh, if I open it, I'm not gonna open up Google Slides, but there's a notes function if you scroll to the bottom of a slide and you can add notes there and you can you can share those notes with people so they can read your, your written out thing um, if they're feeling like it or record a video. So this is actually the next workshop, I believe, and Chad Lamont, a good friend of mine, will be teaching you guys how to do this. But the idea is use your voice and actually record those slides as a video. That's going to be very powerful. And, and if you really feel like people are not going to watch it, add transcribing over the video and transcribe what you're saying, but still have the pitch deck like there. I hope that makes sense. Um, hi, Jack, do you want to share your screen? Jack, you are on stage. So, Jack, uh, you raised your hand indicating you wanted to come up. So, yes, you're now on stage. Feel free to share your screen or drop your link. Can I send you the uh, the link to the slides? You totally, yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll screen share for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a social token idea I have from it for a different sort of pitch. It's not for the near pitch right now, but it's just a, something I put together like a month ago. So, I just wanted to get general notes. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this, and it's forward token saving the world begins at breakfast. Okay, cute. Um, make the forward token larger than saving the world begins at breakfast, because my understanding is saving the world begins at breakfast is like a cute quip that's going underneath that. Is that right? Uh, it's sort of the slogan for the token. Yeah, so if it's a slogan, you're going to want to make that smaller than the, the actual yep. token itself. Because uh, it's hard for me to understand right now looking at this if Saving the World Begins at Breakfast is your product or if Forward Token, token is. Got it. Um, uh, make this down here much smaller. And if you can, like a little logo, a little picture goes far away, as I've said. Um, all right, according to estimates by Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, this is this is 
really interesting is a slide. Okay, so on the right hand side here, I would add like a graphic or like a chart that backs up this data. <clears throat> um, but I would keep this nice and bolded right here. So animal agriculture makes up between 25 to 50 percent of carbon emissions. And then this right here, I would cross this across both the image and the uh, the text and just make sure people understand like the importance of what you're saying there. Because right now it feels a little um, hard to view because there's multiple fonts happening, multiple font sizes. And so you want to keep that consistent, but also like you want to keep it empowered like as text, like you want to keep that text empowered for itself. Um, how many non-animal product meals does it take to curb climate change? This is a beautiful slide because like, even though there's no graphics here, there's a color, there's like a differentiation between the sentence. Um, this is this is beautiful. I really like this. And and maybe you, yeah, this I wouldn't add anything to this actually, except for centering it. Um, because that's like a statement. So just breakfast and lunch. Okay, so that's I would make this just breakfast and lunch in the middle, and then have this be really small text, like underneath it, it, if you're gonna keep it. Alternatively, you can just say, um, according, like I would just say, the average US and the UK per person must consume 90% less beef and 60% less dairy um, yes. to prevent like error birth. Yeah, you don't have to, and, and just do a link, like drop yep. a link in there. But make it that, make that snappy and powerful. Um, mm -hmm. So this is beautiful. Uh, again, uh, I would just add a picture here, like whatever you can. Um, a graph, a, an image, a chart, whatever you feel like. And this is also awesome. Um, good bright colors. I like how you're changing your color scheme throughout the, the thing, but like keeping it consistent, that feels really nice. Um, I would do graphics here again. So maybe like a, yep. a journey, a path, like anything like that would work. And then this last slide, powerful, very powerful. This is very powerful. I would just add like the words with four, like. Got it. Yep, so that perfect. people know how they're doing that. But this is great. Good job. Thank you. Cool. Um, I think we're out of time, Chloe, right? Uh, yes, that is the end of time for this session. So uh, awesome. thank you so much for everyone for coming to the session. And thank you so much, Ashley, for running this. I learned a lot uh, and I had a lot of fun. So thank you, everyone, for your questions and for coming on stage and sharing your decks as well. Yeah, glad to do it. And thank you for everybody who let me critique your deck. I hope you uh, learned something and didn't feel offended. Um, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, have a wonderful day. And keep making beautiful decks, y'all. Okay. Uh, until the next session, everybody. See you on the forums.